Hello. This short video, I want to introduce you to the Fluke 45 Dual Display Multimeter. It's a piece of equipment that you'll be using in most of your electrical labs, if not all of them. Um, if you take a look, what I've done is I, I made a, a picture of what the front panel of this Fluke looks like. And we're going to discuss it in general. I've, I've posted the user manual on Canvas, so you may want to take a look at, not all of it, it gets into a lot of detail, but take a look at at, at least what I discuss here in this video. I want to start out by talking about this in general. The Fluke 45 Dual Display Multimeter. The Fluke 45 is a feature-rich five-digit meter that truly fits all applications and virtually any measurement need on the workbench or in the field. Two multifunction displays and 16 different measurement capabilities allow a wide-ranging versatility at an affordable price. The Fluke 45 delivers high performance and flexibility for manufacturing test, field service, as well as R&D applications. There's a number of features, and I just listed a few of them here, and it's impressive, very impressive. It's a multifunctional dual display. So you can see that most people don't know that, but I'll, I'll show you, you can get actually two displays out of this, two different parameters at the same time. It's a true RMS voltage and current meter. It measures true RMS. You're not gonna understand what that means right now. Probably won't get into it here in, in, in this lab until sometime during the, the 13th or 14th week. And we'll discuss that, but that's important. Frequency measurement, it measures frequency up to one megahertz, as well as voltage, as well as current, as, re as well as resistance. And uh, very, very low percentage DC current accuracy for 4 to 20 milliamp current loop service. And in your controls, you'll talk more about that. But that's an overview of, the, of this multimeter. If you take a look at the front panel, I want you to notice that over here on the left side are your inputs. And we're going to discuss these individually, but this is where you bring in your, to measure your voltage or measure your current or measure your frequency. They're done in this area here. You make a selection here on whether you want voltage or you want current or you want to measure resistance or frequency. That's where you'll make the choice here. And we'll talk about those in detail in just a minute. This is a continuity test. This allows you to, the meter to be set up automatically to auto range. So if you're measuring microamps or milliamps uh, worth of current, um, it'll automatically auto range that for you. Most of the time we keep this on auto. So you press this and it says auto up here. If you want to put it in manual mode and change the ranges separately, you could do that. We're not going to discuss too much of that in this course. I would keep this in auto most of the time. Very rarely are you going to have to turn this, push this button, make this go to manual and use these high and low push buttons here. This is a second, this switch out here, um, this press, this push button switch here is, it gets you in a second display and you'll see it will appear right here. When you push this button, it gives you a second display up here. Here's your power button. Your power button's located right here to turn this on. So let's take a look at these in a little bit more detail. First thing I want to talk about here, and we'll go back and forth to this, but I want to talk about um, this, the function buttons. You press one of these function buttons here to select whether you want to measure voltage. Now, if you notice, this is DC voltage. This is AC voltage. So you have to press either one of these, whether you're, whether you're measuring DC voltage or AC voltage. If you take a look, this, this represents a DC straight line, and here's a sine wave right here. It's very difficult to see, but maybe you can see a little easier right here on the actual meter. This measures DC voltage. This measures AC voltage. This measures DC current, and this measures AC current. This will measure resistance. That's an ohm symbol. This will measure frequency. It changes the display to whatever you select here. This is a continuity test to check to see if there's a short between two points. It'll, it'll beep at you. There's an there's a, there's a, there's a audio sound whenever you 
you short the leads together out here or there's a, there's a continuous path. This will be, we're gonna do that in lab a little bit. Here's your auto, we're gonna keep this in auto up here. Now, when you make the selections here on these, it'll tell you what you're looking at here. So evidently, we're measuring millivolt in the auto range and it's DC. So they push this button here. This button here would give you the DC millivolts. And auto was this right here. So we just talked about looking at the different functions at this point here and frequency. I don't think I mentioned that. Here's your range buttons, but we don't have to worry about these range buttons right here. Like I said, we're not going to worry about the range buttons. We're going to keep it in auto. And the only thing over here I want to talk about really is, is, is just a couple. One is you can get, you can toggle in and out of measure and dB. This is decibels right here. So we can, we can do that with this button here. Now you're not going to worry too much in this course about db levels but this this will tog you in and out of the db mode we already know that this gives you the second display right here let's take a look at what else i have here there's the front panel again they talk about the primary display in this point secondary display up here already talked about it here's your input terminals there's four of them we're going to talk about those in a minute wires are four we'll talk about those in just a minute our function buttons we discussed those the ranging buttons are these and the only thing we mentioned over in this area right here was the db we're not going to worry about that here's your second display when you push this you'll get a second display right here and we have the off on power button right here so what if we want to measure uh, let's let's see how you'd set this up to uh, oh well here let's take a look at what we have here this I got out of the user manual and it just it just shows you the buttons here that we talked about the DC volts the AC volts this DC amps and the AC amps frequency resistance and the continuity test up here just talks about the function buttons. We already know about that. How do you measure voltage? Well, if you take a look to get a voltage, a resistance, or a frequency measurement, if you're gonna measure voltage, resistance, or frequency, and you have to think about this, because if you don't use these correct inputs over here, you could, you could blow out the fuse that's sitting behind this input. There's a, there's a 100 milliamp fuse that sits behind this. And I, more often than not, I have to replace these fuses because st students um, are trying to measure current and, and, and then, then they want to go back to measure voltage and they forgot to, to, take, to take, put the leads in the correct place over here. So you're going to have a red positive lead when you measure DC and you're going to have a black ground lead when you measure DC. So if you're going to measure voltage, let's take voltage for instance, you're going to use the red lead at this point, at this input, and the ground or common, the black one at this point. In other words, that's what I have set up here. If you take a look, I'm going to measure either vo voltage or resistance or frequency. I'm going to use this top left with the red lead, this is where they're at most of the time. And the common black lead is at this point. And what I would do is I could measure my voltage. I'd have to put it on the voltage scale right here that I want, whether I'm measuring DC or AC, don't forget that. And I could get a voltage reading here. But remember, when you're measuring voltage, I'm not gonna show you this, you're gonna get to this in, in, in the class, but here's a resistor you want to measure voltage across there. Here's a resistor you want to measure the voltage across that. Or here's the resistor you want to me measure voltage across there. Here's the resistor you want to measure voltage across. Don't forget this passive sign convention. If you forget the passive sign convention, you're not going to be able to do any of your circuit analysis problems. This is extremely important. It's one of the five most important analysis tools when you're working in electrical engineering. When you assume current, let's say you assume current's going in this direction, conventional current. You, you mark this as a plus and you mark this as a minus. Let's assume in this resistor you have current going this way. Plus, current enters the plus terminal and it comes out the negative. So you put a plus here and a negative here. Let's use the plus sign convention over here. 
Let's say we have current flowing up through this resistor right here. If we have current flowing up through the resistor, current enters the positive side. You put a positive there and you put a negative there. What if you assign current going in this direction? You put your plus there and you put your negative down here. Notice that current always enters the positive side and it always leaves the negative side when you assign your current. And then when you write your equations, you won't have any problems. Now, what's so important about that? Well, when you're measuring voltage across these resistors here, you always put this red lead right here. This red lead or probe we're going to use. The red probe always goes to the positive side when you're measuring voltage. And this ground or black probe, this black lead, always goes to the negative side, no matter which one of these. Red always goes to the positive, and black always goes to the negative. Keep that in mind, it's very important. So here, let's see, don't forget, if you're measuring voltage, whether it's DC voltage or AC voltage, or you're measuring resistance, which we're gonna be doing in this first lab, we're gonna be measuring resistance here. We're gonna be pushing that button in. You wanna make sure that you use these two inputs. You'll be using, using these two inputs. There we're measuring AC voltage or frequency. Notice the only difference is we're pushing this button in for your AC voltage. We're still using these two inputs here. We're still using these two inputs because we're measuring voltage. The only time you use these over here is when you're measuring current. Any time you measure current, any time you measure current, and you're going to have to break the path to measure current. We'll discuss that in about the in a later lab. But what I want you to keep in mind, if you're going to measure current, you either use this or this as your positive red probe. Common never changes. The ground always is here no matter what you're measuring. But why is there two for the red lead when there's only one for the red lead? Why is there only one for the red lead when you're measuring voltage or resistance or frequency? And why do you have two? Well, if you're using 10 milliamps, if your maximum current you're going to measure is 10 milliamps, the red lead goes here. If, if you're going to measure up to 10 amperes, the red lead goes here. Because this is fused at 100 milliamps, this is fused to protect this at 10 amps. We will never use this in lab. I, I don't think you're, we're going to have any labs here in this program where you're going to be measuring the 10 amperes. Could be wrong, but I don't think there are. So if you're measuring current, you're always going to be down here. You're going to be measuring at this point. Now, if you're over 10, mil, 10 mils, you know, let's say you're at uh, 500 milliamps or 2 amps or 3 amps or 4 amps. You know what? You will be using that because this is fused at 10 amps. So you may use this in some labs. This is just fused at 10 amps. But anything under, you know, any, anything in, in the small current range, you're going to be using this. Now, let me tell you the problem that we run into all the time. And you'll do this in, in this course. You'll be measuring current. So you're going to take this lead out and you're going to put it in here. And here's your common lead. So you're going to be measuring current. You're going to be pushing one of these two buttons right here. At first, we're going to be measuring DC. So we'll be pushing this button. And you're measuring current. And you'll do that. And then when you want to measure voltage, you'll push this button here. But you'll forget to take this back to here. And you'll blow that fuse out. You, 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 will, you will blow this fuse out. Because you keep this lead down here and you have this set up for voltage and you, you the voltage is set up that, that forces current through to a point where you, it, it blows that fuse. And it, this happens out of these nine stations or 10 stations, I replace every lab, it seems like I replaced two of them. You have to think constantly when you're, when you're using this multimeter. Where do you have to consider? What do you have to consider? You have to consider whether you're measuring 
DC values of voltage and current or AC values. That's the first thing. And the second thing, and probably the most important to protect this device, is if you're measuring voltage or resistance, the red lead goes here. The red lead goes up here. If you're measuring current, it either goes at this point or this point. And in most of our labs, it's going to be down here. You, you have the red lead at this point, which is right there. The black lead or the common lead or the reference lead always stays here. That's why it's called common. It's common whether you're measuring voltage and it's common whether you're measuring, measuring voltage. Uh, whether you're measuring voltage or whether you're measuring, measuring current. And let's see what we have here. Oh, a diode continuity test. You know, we're not going to worry too much about diodes right now, but if you have to do a continuity test, and I'm going to have you do continuity tests on fuses and on some wire. It's all part of one of the labs coming up. Um, you, know, you could look for ohmage. You could look for resistance and look for a short zero ohms. That tells you there's a short. But a real quick way to do a continuity test is just listen for a sound. And that's where you would just... Don't forget you're measuring resistance or doing a continuity test. You keep it, you keep the red lead here and you push that button. And then when there's a short between these two points right here in the circuit, when there's a short or a straight path for current between this point and this point with no components in between other than uh, uh, a wire or a solder bridge, Anything that would cause no resistance between this point or negligible resistance between this point and this point, you'll get a little tone, a little sound. Hope that helps get you familiar with the Fluke 45 meter. We're going to be using it a lot. And um, look this video over again, maybe real quick. Make sure you understand this before you come into lab. And that concludes this lecture.